Word up, Georgia Japan here with more information about Wednesday's downtown. And today, I got some theories about Hamada, and a few others. As always, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like or comment, and I'll get started on finding more information about the show. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> I don't have notes today. I actually filled up the book. I need to buy a new one. First theory. A Hamada still exists. So back in the 1990s, downtown were famous not only for their manzai ability, but also for Hamada's fashion. At a time when manzai comedians were mostly wearing slick suits, Hamada was known for his very casual fashion. So much so that he was actually picked up by fashion magazines. And he had the term Hamada coined for people who imitate his style of fashion. This is probably a slight joke to people who imitated Amudo Namie's style of fashion, as they were called Amudas. However, Amudo Namie no longer dresses like she used to back in the 1990s, but Hamada still does. And so the show set out to find if anyone still followed Hamada's style of fashion. Hamada's fashion style is this type of jacket with some old jeans. Upon hitting the street, they found a lot of people wearing this type of fashion. However, none of them said they drew inspiration from Hamada. The show continued to dig through old fashion magazines. <laughs> they found some pretty cringy pictures. One fashion magazine said that Hamada's fashion is the adult version of street casual. And so the show began to interview people who were just wearing street casual clothing. But again, nobody said they drew inspiration from Hamada. Another fashion magazine stated that Hamada's fashion is good for people of all body types. So the show set out to look for people that were kind of overweight. And they found some. And this guy actually said he drew inspiration from downtown for his fashion. But he, he said he drew inspiration from Matsumoto. Matsumoto is known to wear this kind of traditional Japanese style, which is what he said he was copying. After a grueling three-week investigation, the show finally found one person who said they drew inspiration from Hamada. And so the theory was proven true. A Hamada still exists. Uh, some bonus information, he took off his jacket, he had some, <laughs> he had a vulgar English written on his shirt, but he was also saying that he copied Hamada's style of wearing a long sleeve shirt with a t-shirt. I sure hope he knows what that English means. Gosh, I can't believe the show investigated for three weeks. Good job, Wednesdays Downtown. Good job. Next theory. Every caricature of Hamada emphasizes the lips. Hamada is often poked fun at for having big lips. In Japanese, he's often referred to as having Tadako Kuchibiru. Oh, and this is a Tadako. But in reality, his lips aren't really that big, especially compared to other people. So the show went out to ask cartoonists to draw Hamada. And sure enough, every caricature emphasized the lips. The show also asked the artist to draw Matsumoto, and it was found that the artist emphasized different parts of Matsumoto. But I guess in recent years, most artists would just emphasize his muscles. The show decided to take to the streets and ask regular people to draw Hamada to see if they would also emphasize the lips. After interviewing a wide variety of people, they found that everyone emphasized the lips. This is my favorite picture, by the way, that is, that is art. The show then wondered, what if we could get someone who didn't know who downtown was? and just showed them a picture of Hamada. Would they still emphasize the lips? The show went to Narita Airport to interview foreign people. It's kind of similar to this show. In fact, they actually bumped into them. And the first person they asked was actually just interviewed by that show. The show asked the foreign people what feature was most striking. And in every situation, lips were mentioned. This German couple over here actually turned down the the other interview, but accepted Wednesday's downtown interview. Awesome people. He likened Hamada's lips to sausages. And the show thought, well, I guess in Japan we call people with big lips Tadako Kuchibiru. But do people in Germany actually say sausage lips? Uh, I don't know if I got anybody from Germany watching, but do you, would you say that? 
Before the theory's closing, the show actually found a picture Matsumoto drew of Hamada from 20 years ago. Here it is. Yeah, every drawing and character of Hamada emphasizes the lips. Okay, next theory. Hamada's announcement call is the best in Japan. Um, some background here. This theory is introduced by Yahagi, and he has a running gag of, well, kind of building up a person before introducing a theory that pokes fun at them. Pretty brave guy for poking fun at Hamada. The show compared other MCs to Hamada's MC. And yeah, it's clear that they increased the volume and chose some rather weird segments of Hamada. It's pretty silly, but still entertaining. The panel kept praising Hamada for his uh, speaking ability, which made him feel greatly embarrassed. He also punched that cat and threatened to hurt Yahagi. Good, good stuff. For you. Yeah, it's, it's always fun to see Hamada angry. Anyway, I, I think it's pretty true. He's definitely one of the best MCs in Japan. That was a short one. Next theory. Even if it was left on a train, no one would take Katsumata's autobiography. Oh, and if you don't know, this is Katsumata. Um, yeah, he appears on a lot of shows. Uh, he was a member of an idol group, I believe. But yeah, you just see him like on a lot of shows. Yeah, and this theory was introduced by Yahagi. Yeah, actually, his initial theories all involved Katsumata. His first theory was Katsumata seriously has zero fans. Uh, they, they couldn't actually research this. They asked if there was a fan of Katsumata to mail the show. Nobody mailed the show, so... <laughs> uh, his second theory was... No one can write Katsumata's full name in kanji. I forget the number, I think it was like 13 or 14 people out of 100. <laughs> and now this is his third theory, poking fun at Katsumata. Anyway, the scale of this theory is pretty amazing. They're gonna start at the southern part of Kyushu in Kagoshima and ride the local train all the way up to Hokkaido. Yeah, that's... that's really far. Escorting Katsumata's autobiography will be an AD to monitor if anyone takes the book. And to interview people that do. And the adventure began in Kagoshima. Real beautiful scenery, actually. I would love to do something like this one day. Not the autobiography thing, I mean just riding a local train around Kyushu. Yeah, yeah, there just weren't that many people on the train, so nobody noticed. Upon arriving in Fukuoka, there were more people, but a lot of them just looked down at their smartphones and nobody noticed the autobiography above them. In Hiroshima, finally somebody noticed the book and picked it up and put it back down and then got off the train. The assistant director quickly chased after him to interview him, but he actually turned down the interview, saying that if this was shown, people at the office would laugh at him. While passing through downtown's hometown, they took a few jabs at it. I love the joke of the AD being really nervous, clenching his wallet, like this is a really dangerous town. <laughs> and the show went up to Osaka, AD had a good time there. Since people just weren't noticing, or maybe people didn't want to touch someone else's stuff, uh, the show decided to take another measure. The show put a stack of 10 autobiographies to catch people's eye. And that worked. More and more people would go up, pick it up, and put it back down. When they interviewed why they didn't take the book home, most people said it just wasn't worth bringing home. <laughs> to help it appeal more to people, the show decided to use pop art advertising. And they got the store Village Vanguard, a store that's known for using pop art, to make an advertisement. But that didn't work. The show continued up north, through Tokyo, all the way up to Aomori. And it looked like nobody was gonna take the book. And before they knew it, they were at the northernmost point of Hokkaido. And the theory was proven. Even if left on a train from Kyushu to Hokkaido, no one would take Katsumata's book. The question arose that maybe no one would just take a book on a train, but they tested it with other books and people took them. I guess Japan is just a really safe place. Yeah, I've lost items, but I always get them back. 
I always find him at the lost and found center or in most cases nobody touches it and I can find it exactly where I left it. I don't know if I went to a really ghetto elementary school or something but I remember a lot of kids saying stuff like, oh find your keepers and I got into a lot of disputes about people trying to take my stuff. I always hated that saying finders keepers okay all right oh wow all right so yeah that's all i got for now um again thanks again for all your support i'm gonna try to bring you more information and more stuff that just doesn't get released um to the west i think there's a lot of amazing um content in japan that's just never translated or never brought overseas and that's something that i'm really gonna try to do on my channel so i hope you'll keep watching and yeah thanks have a glorious day. Next theory. Every character, every character, every caricature of, every character, every caricature of, every drawing of Hamada emphasizes his lips.